Shalom, Yasharala Shalom. This your Ak Kadash Allahayim coming at you with another quick lesson. First and foremost, I like to say Ka Hala Abunawa Yahawa Bahasham Yahweh Shai Hamashiak Amanawal Barakata. Yahweh being the name of our Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the Lord of Hosts, the Almighty, and Yahweh Shai being the name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And um, Happy Day of Atonement. To the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Um, it's a day of humility. right? It's a day of acknowledging your transgressions. And, and repenting for your transgressions. Man. Right? It's not a day of, of being proud. It's not a day of, of, of being wicked. Right? It's not a day of being puffed up and arrogant. It's a day of humility, humbleness, meekness. Right? And, and 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 gratitude and, and graciousness that the most high have had mercy on you this past year to allow you to see another day of atonement man All right and we're not under the the sacrificial system of the of the uh stipulations of the old covenant so to say right we under the sacrificial system of the new covenant that our lord hamashiach yahushua has established through his blood you know what I'm saying? Even though we're not in a, a fulfillment or in the full uh, aspect of the new covenant, we still have entered into the uh, new covenant by the shedding of the blood of Hamashiach Yahusha. So when we make an, an atonement for our sins, you know, on this day of atonement, it's through the blood of Hamashiach Yahusha. It's not through the blood of goats and lambs and bullocks, right? Because Yahusha was that sacrificial lamb. And we're doing this day in the in the memory of our Lord Hamashiach Yahusha, right? So you know, with that being said, um, the topic of the lesson I'm gonna go into today, man, is is you know that spirit of slander or that spirit of talebearer, right? Um, you want that spirit to be purged out of you. You don't want that spirit nowhere near you, right? You don't want that spirit in 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 your uh circumference, man, in your in your facility, right? You don't want that 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 spirit nowhere near your household, man. Right? Cuz that's that's a dangerous spirit to have. You know what I'm saying? So this topic, you know, on this day of atonement is more so going to be going into to tail bearers and slanderers and gossipers. Right, because that spirit is running heavy in Israel right now, man. And we need to purge that thing up out of here. Right, so let's go to the book of Leviticus, the 19th chapter and the 16th verse. Right, the most I say, cry loud and spare not. Show our people their transgressions, man. Show your people their transgression. Right, because a lot of people, they'll sweep this under the rug. They like, okay, I don't eat pork or I keep the Sabbath day. I don't eat shrimp, crab, and lobster. I don't steal. But you're doing everything else outside of that, right? You covetous as hell, right? You putting other gods before the Most High, right? You just, you know, you keeping pieces of the commandments that you pick and choose to keep, right? Instead of really applying all of them to your life. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 16. And it reads, Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among the people. Neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Right. So it's a commandment for us to not to go up and down as a talebearer. What's a talebearer? A person who maliciously gossips and reveals secrets. Right. That's that's what a talebearer is. Like you, you confide in somebody. You telling them something personal that's going on in your life. And now they done turned around and told somebody else. And that person done told everybody else. Right. Or they done took your personal business and put it on social media. That's a talebearer, right? The Most High doesn't encourage us to go up and down being a talebearer, a talebearer among the people, right? Right. So we should honor that. It say, "Neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor." I am the Lord Yahweh, right? Standing against the blood of your neighbor is uh, an example. Is you hearing somebody speak maliciously? About this person behind their back and how they're going to do something to them. Right? You can't just sit back and allow that to happen. 
right? You can't just sit back and, and act like you didn't hear nothing. No, because this situation could really turn violent and they could really go murder this person or they, or they really could go hurt this person, right? In another instance or another example, you know, you see somebody, you know, about to fight and they are outnumbered. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to just sit back and watch them get beat to death, right? You're going to intervene or defuse the situation to the best you can, right? It say, neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord, Yahweh, right? Because a lot of slander, a lot of people that, that backbite and, and, and be a tail bearer among the people, they usually be the reason why violent incidences happen in our communities, right? It don't just happen out of nowhere. It's the origin to the story. Right. So so a guy and another guy get into it. One ends up killing another guy, shooting him in the face in the middle of the neighborhood. It didn't just start right there. It's the origin behind that story. It could have been some possible slander going on, you know, where you where you misrepresenting this person's image. Or it could be some accusations that are false, bearing false witness that could have played a role in, in the person getting shot in the middle of the neighborhood or it could have been slander or tail bearer, right? Because that's what leads to murder or that's what leads to um, conflict and discord, right? Let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 13. The book of Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 13 and it reads, a tail bearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Right? So, in a nutshell, a tail bearer is an ungodly person. If you confide in a person and they're going and telling your business to the rest of the world, right? That's a tail bearer. That's their job. That's what they do. And believe it or not, some of your best friends are tail bearers, right? Some of your family members. Your sister, your cousin, your daddy, your mama, your uncle, your auntie. They straight up tail barrels. That's what they do. They have the spirit of running up and down, maliciously gossiping about people behind their back. That's just what they do. Right? And you got to be aware of that. You got to be conscious of who you're around. You got to know what to say and what not to say around some people. That's just how it is, man. Right? But they say, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. So you want to be around godly men or godly women that are known to keep the commandments of the most high. Right. Because if, if, if you're around people that's not reading the Bible or don't believe that we have to keep the commandments nine times out of ten, they are um, accessible to being, you know, a tail bearer, a backbiter. Right. They are capable of being a tail bearer and a backbiter because they don't know they don't have the knowledge of the law. Right. They don't know what they doing is actually wicked and wrong. Right. So you want to hang around people that are faithful in spirit that are concealed a matter if they if if, if uh, you confide in them. Right. Let's jump to the book of Proverbs. The 10th chapter. Let's go back a chapter. Let's go to chapter 10 in the 18th verse. All right. The book of Proverbs. Chapter 10 and verse 18. And it reads. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool, right? So a lot of people out here in Babylon, right, they, they put on this persona that they are this imaginary person that they want people to think that they are, right? They portray to be somebody that they truly not. They hypocrites and actors out here in Babylon, right? They playing a character. For the most part, right? And they, they can easily hide hatred with lying lips, right? Like an example, uh, somebody pretending to be friendly or polite with this other person that they really dislike, right? And every time they come around and they see each other, this person got on this, this mask and they pretending to really like this person and be kind and polite with this person. But as soon as this person leave, immediately when they're gone, this person just ends up slandering and, and tail bearing and, back, and backbiting and gossiping maliciously about this person that they just had a smile on their face with. Right. Right behind their back. As soon as they're gone, they, they instantly 
Oh, I don't like that nigga. Oh, I don't like that 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 chick. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't like them. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's hiding hatred with lying lips because you pretending to to like this person in front of their face. You all smiles and giggles. Everything is okay. You asking them questions, how they doing, how they family, how they kids doing. But behind their back, you gossiping, right? That's a person that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth for slander. Is a fool, man. Right? So this kind of behavior is 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 somebody, it reflects somebody that that's masking their true feelings, they they true hatred or ill will with false words and kindness or flattery. Right? And it's a lot of those people in Israel, man. Right? You know what I'm saying? He that utter for slander is a fool. A slander is the action or crime of making a false spoken statement damaging to a person's reputation, right? Just like social media or the media outlets, they are known for slandering people. And I ain't going to say every media outlet, but a majority, a majority is known for slandering people for the sensationalism or for the uh, theatrics to get views or or. To get people to look and see what they what they um posting on on social media or what they portraying on the news, right? So you have to be mindful. You have to be mindful of people, man, and you have to be able to identify it. And the only way to be able to identify it is to be walking with the Most High and Him increasing your discernments, right? Because you you could be best friend with a with a gossiper right now, and you don't know the you don't know the laws, so you don't know that you're supposed to correct them out of love and tell them not to be that way so you just sit up there and listen to everything they got to say about everybody right which is wicked man right we got to purge that out of yasharala asap right let's go to the book of proverbs chapter 18 and verse 8 the book of proverbs chapter 18 and verse 8 and it reads the words of a talebearer are as wounds Right. The words of a talebearer are as wounds. So the words of a, somebody that gossip hurt like wounds. Right. So you may not be physically injured off of what this person said, but what they said can cause a deep emotional and psychological pain in your inner self. You know what I'm saying? So the words of a talebearer are as wounds. Why? Because words have power to damage relationships Words have power to damage reputations and trust, right? And and words have power, you know, to to cause physical harm because your your words can lead to uh, physical physical uh, tension, right? It could lead to violence. It could lead to fighting. It could lead to um, you harming somebody, or the words that you spoke to somebody could be so hurtful that they harm themselves, right? So the words of a talebearer are as wounds and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly and the belly is synonymous to the mind or the heart or the or the soul. Right. So, yeah, words can cut deep, man. They say words are like swords, man. Right. When you rearrange that word swords, if you take off the S and put it at the end after the D, it goes into words. Right. So the innermost innermost parts you know, is your thoughts, your emotions, your soul, man. Words of a talebearer can cut deep, man, because you don't expect this person that you confide in, or, or your right hand man or your right hand woman, right, to to go up and down, spreading gossip maliciously, with ill intent, right. So we gotta we gotta be mindful of who we surround ourselves with, man. And you gotta be mindful of that spirit jumping on you, right. You, a lot of us in, in Israel, a lot of us should be atoning and asking the Most High to forgive us for being a talebearer or a slanderer, right? Let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 18 and verse 8. Salaki, we just read that. Let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 20 and verse 19, all right? The book of Proverbs, the 20th chapter... In the 19th verse, and it reads, He that go he that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Therefore, 
meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Right? So a talebearer we know is a slanderer, somebody that reveals secrets, that, that maliciously gossip about other people, right? Now, now you got to think about this. If somebody coming to you with the gossip, right, or the tea, like they, they like to say, you know, today's time, the tea, the gossip. If somebody always coming to you with the gossip about other people, don't you think that they going to other people with gossip about you? Right? It only makes sense. If they if they'll do this to these other people, what, what what would they do to me? How would they do me? All right, you got to be mindful of that. Right? He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets, therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Right? Meaning don't interfere. Meddle meddling meddling goes into interfering. Don't interfere uh with him that flattereth with his lips. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Yeah, therefore, don't interfere with him that flattereth with his lips, man. Right? You have to be mindful. All right? Because you could speak, you could sin in your speech. You could have evil communications. Right? They say evil com communications corrupt good manners. Right? So you have to be mindful of who you have around you and what in the things that they say. Right? It says uh, in the book of Job, you know, the, the ear trieth words like like the tongue tastes meat, like the tongue trieth meat. Roughly paraphrasing, man, you have to hey, you have to analyze and dissect what's coming out of people's mouths, man, when they are around you. Right. You, you eat the meat and spit out the bones, man, but you got to correct them if they going off, man. Right. You have to correct your brothers and sisters if they going out out of love. Right. Not not with ill intent. If they doing something, something wrong, sincerely correct, correct them. Right. There, there's a rebuke that's gentle and there's a rebuke that's sharp, man. Sometimes you got to be gentle with your brothers and your sisters. Right. And sometimes you got to give sharp rebukes. Right. You have to discern the situation. Right. But you want to part ways and separate yourself from gossipers, those that maliciously gossip about gossip about other people. Right? Let's go to the book of Psalm, chapter 101, in the fifth verse. The book of Psalm, chapter 101, in verse 5, and it reads, Whoso pri privately slander his neighbor, right? And slander goes into the, the crime. Or the action of making false spoken states statements uh, damaging to a person's reputation, right? Meaning bearing false witness, lying to make somebody's image look wicked, right? He that go about, so like it, whoso privately slander his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that have a high look and a proud heart will not I suffer, Right. So coming into the day of atonement, we are required to fast, afflict our souls. And if you don't afflict your soul, you're going to be cut off from among the people. The same way that a person who privately slander his neighbor will be cut off from his people. Right. It say him that have a high look and a proud heart. Will I not suffer? You know what I'm saying? So the most High not dealing with those of a haughty spirit. Right. Those with an arrogant spirit. He's not dealing with those type of people, man. He's dealing with the humble. He say the meek shall inherit the earth, man. A humble person is not going around slandering individuals. Right. A humble person is not going around maliciously speaking about nobody. Right. There's no gal in the mouth of the humble, man. Right. So you want to model yourself after a godly person. You want to model yourself after men that's known to keep the commandments. You don't want to model yourself after these rappers and these entertainers because their mouth is full of slander. Their mouth is full of gossip. Their mouth is full of tail-bearing. Right? You don't want to be like that. You want to be like a godly man that's known to keep the commandments of the Most High. Right? You don't want to be judged in the midst of the whole congregation for being a slanderer, right? 
Anytime you talk about somebody, it's a negative, a negative conversation. Never nothing positive. Right? So you want to be mindful of that. Right? Let's go to the book of Exodus, the 23rd chapter in the first verse. The book of Exodus. The 23rd chapter in the first verse and it reads. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Right? Meaning you're not supposed to slander people. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Right? And that goes back into, you know, um, not standing against the blood of your neighbor. Right? You don't want to. You don't want to be around tail bearers and gossipers and now they formulating a plot to hurt somebody. Right. They raising a false report. They bearing false witness, slandering this person's character. Don't you be involved and get into it and feed their ego and agree with them and be like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, that person is like that. Even though they really not like that, you on the wave that they on because you trying to be a man pleaser or a woman pleaser and you. You like who they like and you don't like who they don't like. You can't be like that. Right. According to the Bible, thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Right. So your, your, your best friend lying on this individual, spreading rumors, gossip about this individual and somebody who loved this individual or who know this individual they come to you asking you questions what have you seen this person do or are you a witness to 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 this person's behavior or mannerisms or or a witness to this person's characteristic and you lie to you bear false witness and now you slandering hey that's a that's a wicked thing man and you're going to be punished for that All right because the most high is a just power you're going to reap what you sow, man. You know what I'm saying? So we have to be mindful as a collective, as a nation of people of, of, of our speech, right? They, a tongue, how, how small is the member, but it, a great of a fire it kindleth, right? Roughly paraphrasing, the, 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 the tongue, it boasts many great things and, and it's a little member, but how great of a fire your tongue can kindle, man. Right. Your communications can get people murdered. Your, your communications can get people put to death if it's used in the wrong way. Right. Words are swords, man. Right. I know you like, dang, why you keep going in the Old Testament? Why you why you always in the Old Testament bringing out scriptures? Get get some scriptures about this in the New Testament. Right. But. We we got plenty. We got a plethora of scriptures in the New Testament that speak on the same thing, not being a talebearer, right? Let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter four and verse thirty-one. The book of Ephesians, chapter four and verse thirty-one, and it reads, "Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking." be put away from you with all malice right so being conformed so like it being transformed by the renewing of your mind coming into the knowledge of the truth being converted through the law statutes and commandments coming to the to the light of the law right putting on that new man you have to let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you you, you no longer live that life. Right. You no longer live that life of. Spreading gossip, spreading rumors, spreading lies, bearing false witness on brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? In the world, I knew I knew brothers that that would say they slept with a woman. And they really didn't sleep with this woman, man. Right. In the world, they would call that lying on your, your private member, right? Lying on your private member. Oh, yeah, I smashed that. Oh, yeah, I hit that. But in actuality, the truth of the matter is they never they never slept with this woman, right? You have to 
You have to put that old mindset away, man. Coming into this truth. You got to put that old, you got to, that's old, the old thing shall pass away. You got to put that old man down. Right? Uh, let's go to the book of James chapter 4 and verse 11. And this is important, man. This is important. Right? The book of James chapter 4 and verse 11. And it reads, Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. Right? So we shouldn't be out here slandering each other, gossiping behind each other back. Right? Threatening each other behind each other back. Right? We not. That's That's not. How the most high wants us to behave, man. Right? You can't behave like you can't behave like that and still make it into the kingdom. It's just not gonna happen. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. Right? So ultimately, you know, some one your brother that is on the same walk as you, that's trying to keep the commandments. That's trying to keep the faith in Hamashiach, Yahawashai, and you over here speaking evil of him, right? You over here judging him, not according to the, to the law. You judging him according to your own intent, your own feelings, right? How you perceive he should be acting or behaving, right? You speak evil of the law, right? And you're not a doer of the law. You're, you done made yourself a judge of the law, right? So we have to be mindful. We have to be mindful. Right? But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. Right? Because you 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 judging your brother and speaking evil of your brother, not accordance to the law, statutes, and commandments, but your own intent. Right? Your own opinions, how your brother should be behaving, or how he shouldn't be behaving. Or how he should be conducting himself. Or how he shouldn't be conducting himself. If you're not breaking no commandments. Why are you speaking evil of this brother? If this brother. Supposedly your brother. And he trying to walk in the light of the law. And doing everything in his willpower. To obey the commandments. And keep the faith in Hamashiach Yahushai. Why are you speaking evil of this brother? Or why are you speaking evil of this sister man? It don't make, make it make sense. Right? It's because. Of that hatred that you hide with your lips. You you don't really entreat this brother as a brother. Only in front of people when it's convenient. You treat him as a brother. But behind his back, that's your enemy. Right? Behind his back, that's your, that's your adversary. Right? And he that judges his brother speaketh evil of the law. Because the law says you're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. Right? And you're supposed to judge righteous judgment according to the law. Right? You're not supposed to be making up your own rules like some of the scribes and Pharisees. Making up your own traditions. Right? You're supposed to judge righteous judgment. And he that judges his brother speak evil of the law. And judge the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. Right? So you, you want to be a doer of the law. Love your neighbor as yourself, man. Judge righteous judgment. Don't judge somebody where there is no where there is no law. There is no transgression. So if they not breaking the commandments, there's no reason to judge somebody on if they got on dirty shoes or not. Right. Or if they drive this car or that car. Right. You, you shouldn't be judging our people based off your own perception or your own standards. Right. And that's where a lot of slander and tail bearing come from. Leaning on your own understanding. Let's go to the book of first Peter, chapter two and verse one. The book of first Peter, chapter two and verse one, and it reads, wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. Right. So. Yeah, you come into the to the truth. Yeah, I'm an Israelite. Oh, I'm a, I'm a chosen seed. Oh, I'm part of the tribe of Judah. I'm the part of the tribe of Ephraim. You know what I'm saying? You you excited 
or, or, I, or I stop celebrating holidays, right? Or I put fringes on my garments, right? I'm eating clean now, but you, but you still haven't disciplined your tongue yet, right? You still out here speaking all manner of evil things, right? You out here gossiping about, about people behind their back. You know what I'm saying? When we come into the law of light, we should be examining ourselves, reading these scriptures and applying them to our life, man. If, if we go against, you know, um, if we go against the commandments in our speech, hey, you going against the commandments, right? You didn't have to physically go against the commandments to, to break the law. Yeah, you could sin in your speech, man. Right? You could sin with your lips. Oh, I kill that nigga. You, you speaking about murder. And then you got murder in your heart because you said it. Right? All the evils that, that come out on the external, it started from your heart. Right? That's what our Lord Hamashiach Yahweh taught us, man. Right? Fornications, murders, envies, wrath, all that start in your heart. In your mind, in your soul, right, and that's where you got to check your 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 sins at within yourself, right. When you wake up and put off that old man, you have to lay aside all malice and all guile, and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. A lot of brothers and sisters has hasn't uh, stopped that evil speaking, man. All right, and you need to atone for that. And try to be better this up and coming year, you know, for being better in your speech. Right. Let's go to the book of Revelations, chapter 13 and verse 15. Right. Because everything have an origin. Right. Everything have an origin. And a lot of, and a lot of times we are influenced by adversaries. Right. By Esau, Edom and the other nations to behave in a manner that is ungodly. Right. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 15. And it reads, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Esau had power to give life to the image of the beast. Right. How do you have power to give life to the image of the beast? Right. By promoting. Uh, wickedness. And promoting and enticing our people to sin. Through what? Media, radio, politics, entertainment, books, films, uh, commercials, magazines, buildings, companies, right? Esau had power to give life to the image of the beast, right? That the image of the beast should both speak. The image of the beast can speak media, radio, politics, right? An example the world, the media, right, politics, the radio tell you that if you uh, that you could be born gay, you was born a homosexual. Right. That's what they teach you. That's what they say. Right. And then. As a child growing up, you're, you're seeing all this endorsements or advertisements of gay behaviors and and. You know, movies, film, you know, bus stops, commercials in public, gay bars, gay restaurants, gay nightclubs. It make you accustomed to something that's really wicked. Right. That's how the image of the beast speak to you through through what you see. Right. And what you hear and what you can touch. That's how the, that's how the, the image of the beast should both speak. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Right. So if you don't agree or worship the doctrines and philosophies, the ideas of wickedness, they want you to be put to death. You're 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 nothing to them. You're not in agreement with them. So they want you to die. Right. That's Esau Edom. Right. Let's jump to the book of Revelation, chapter 16 and verse 13. The book of Revelation, chapter 16 and verse 13, and it reads, 
The sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Right. So that's the time we are living in now. The Euphrates River dried up. We in the sixth seal. Right. The Euphrates River is dried up and the kings of the east are preparing for war against the west. Right. Verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. The dragon represents Esau Edom. And out of the mouth of the beast, the beast represents the system that is ran by Esau Edom. Right. And out of the mouth of the false prophet and the false prophet is the Antichrist. That is pushing the agenda through religion of Satan. Right. They is pushing the agenda through religion, the doctrine of devils, right? That's the false prophet, the Christian church, the Baptist church, Islam, right? Every, every religion that don't have nothing to do with the law, statutes, and commandments in the faith in Christ, right? It said, and I saw, verse 15, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. The three unclean spirits like frogs are... The media, religion, and politics, right? Religion, media, and politics, right? So the media, the media heavily influences people to bear false witness and slander and tail bearer and backbite because that's what the media does. Social media, the news media outlets, they looking for stories, the sensationalism of stories to get their views up. So they'll they'll put out they'll put out information that is not true just to get a reaction out of the people, just to get eyes glued on their message or their program or their network. Right? So a lot of slander and gossip comes from the media. Right. That's an unclean spirit. Right. The spirit of tail bearing, slander and backbiting. That's a that's an unclean spirit. And what CNN do that all day. Fox News do that all day. Right. New York Times do that all day. You know what I'm saying? All these news outlets are more focused on the drama, the theatrics. Right. More than they're they're focused on the truth of the matter. Right. They put out all kind of allegations, all kind of allegations without substantial evidence on people. And that's the same way Israel do at times, man. Israel will put out all these allegations. Oh, I heard so and so did this. And you automatically believe them. Now you automatically judging this person off a lie. Right. I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out the mouth of the dragon. Media. Right. Is an unclean spirit. That heavily influence um, wicked communications, right? Religion is another unclean spirit because the Most High didn't give us religion. He gave us a heritage. He gave us the law of life for a heritage. He said we discontinue from our heritage, our culture, right? Religion is not our heritage. Christianity is not our culture. Catholicism, Jehovah's Witness. Seven day of Venice. That's not that's not our culture. Non-denomination. That's not our culture. Right. Our culture is keeping the laws and keeping the faith. man. That's our culture. And then you have another unclean spirit, which is politics. And when you look at politics, it's full of propaganda. It's, it's full of witchcraft and sorcery, just like the churches, just like the media. They all have that in common. Propaganda, witchcraft and sorcery. Right. When you look at the politics, you openly see Kamala Harris and Donald Donald Trump. They openly, openly, opening, openingly, Salaki. <laughs> that's a tongue twister. Open, openingly, right? Openingly, we witnessing them slander each other in the public, in public eyes view, in front of the whole world, slander each other all the time, all day, every day, and that's how the country acts. Right. Believe it or not, your world leaders, the person that's running for president and vice president, 
Y'all mimic their behavior, man. Y'all slander each other. Y'all gossip about each other. Make campaigns. Make ads about each other. Right? Because y'all still haven't shared off that old man completely. Y'all still got y'all foot in the world, man. Right? So our people got to be acknowledged. They got to uh, be knowledgeable and aware of their behaviors, man. Right. They follow in the ways of this B system. And that's why these things are occurring. Right. That's why I brought this out in Revelation, because. These behaviors are influenced by the B system. Right. These behaviors are influenced by the B system. So the beast, Esau, Edom, this B system, right? They know what the word of the Lord says. They know that the most I have rules, statutes, and commandments that we must apply to our life. So their job is to go against every law, every commandment that the most high created. They are they are um created to go against that. Right? And they want you to go against it too, man. Because they know if you're going against the commandments, they have power and dominion over you. Right? So verse 13 again. Revelation 16 and verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs, the media, religion, and politics, come out of the mouth of the dragon. That's Esau, Edom. And the mouth of the beast. That's the system that's in opposition to of the law statutes and commandments that's the beast system the system that fuels our society right now the system that influences the whole world right now the beast system and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet these uh dominate these uh non-denominations these religions that were created by men to keep you away from the most high verse 14 for they are the spirits of devils, of deceivers, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, which is the children of Israel, to gather them to the battle of the great day of the almighty. Right. So, yeah, the B system influences us to be backbiters and tail bearers, and, and they use the media to do such. They use entertainment to further their agenda. Uh, they to further their agenda, 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 right? They use entertainment. They use celebrities, right? A lot of these podcast uh, people are are set up to to nonstop slander and backbite constantly, right? But we got to be set apart from the rest of the world. We Israel, we Yasharala, man. We 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 must be set apart from the rest of the world. Right? Let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19 and verse 6. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19 and verse 6 in the Apocrypha. And it reads, He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. And strife goes into bitter disagreements. You could disagree with somebody peacefully. You don't have to disagree and, and, and have murder in your heart or envy in your heart or hatred in your heart when you disagree with somebody. But only you could do that if you can rule your tongue. A lot of you niggas, y'all not ready for the kingdom because the kingdom is rulership. And you can't even rule over your own tongue yet, man. Right? He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife and he that hateth babblings shall have less evil right so babblings is just people going on and on about things that has no substance they making a situation out of no situation right or they bring in um conflict where there is no conflict they just babbling and babbling and babbling right he that hated babbling shall have less evil verse 7 rehearse not unto another that which is told unto thee and thou shalt fare never the worse whether it be friend or foe talk not of other men's lives and if thou canst without offense reveal them not right so basically avoid gossiping man avoid that 
right? Don't be revealing secrets that was told unto you in confidence, right? Don't talk about other people's private affairs. You have counsel with people. Don't go bringing that 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 private counsel to the public, man. Right. Re regardless if they are friend or enemy, don't don't do that. Whether you consider this person a friend or whether you consider this person an enemy, a hey, conceal the matter. Right. Don't don't talk of other men's lives or their personal issues, man. Right. So, you know, discussing somebody's personal life can lead to misunderstanding. You know, you can you can damage somebody's reputation. You can you can break up relationships. Right. So you have to be mindful. You have to be able to rule over your tongue to do such things. man. You know. Even if the information is positive information. Right. Still don't go uh, reveal it to other people, man, unless they tell you you can't. You know what I'm saying? Don't 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 go up and down being a tail bearer, man. You breaking you breaking the commandments. There's judgments for that. Right? Verse number 9. For he heard and observed thee, and when the time is and when the time cometh, he will hate thee. Right? So somebody going to examine you. So if you're not examining yourself or controlling your speech, putting away that evil communication, the person that's confined in you, right? They going to examine you. And then if, if you turn out to be a tail bearer, maliciously gossiping behind their back or spreading their secrets, hey, they're going to grow to not like you a lot. They're going to know not to tell your ass nothing. Right. Verse 10. If thou has heard a word, let it die with thee and be bold. It will not burst thee. It's not going to kill you. Let let that secret let, let you die with that secret, man. Holding that secret in is not going to make you explode. Right. Just like we got to turn back home, man. Hey, that nigga can't hold water, man. You tell that nigga something, he going hey, to spill it. Can't hold water. Right? You're not going to burst if you, if you keep a secret that, that your, that your um, brother or sister tell you to keep. You're not gonna, it's not going to make you explode to hold in a secret, man. Right? Let's jump to the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28 and verse 13. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28 and verse 13, and it reads. Curse the whisperer and the double tongued. Right. For such have destroyed many that were at peace. Right. So you're cursed if you're a whisperer, meaning you gossip, you backbite, you slander. Right. And a double tongue. And then that's what Esau Edom have a double tongue where he say one thing, but he mean another. He's 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 deceiving you in his speech. That's a double tongue. Right. Those people are cursed. Why? Because they have destroyed many that were at peace with them. Verse 14, a backbiting tongue have disquieted many and driven them from nation to nation. Strong cities have it pulled down and overthrown the houses of great men. Right. So a backbiting tongue is dangerous and wicked. Verse 15, a backbiting tongue has cast out virtuous women and deprived them of their labors. Whoso hearkening unto it shall never find rest and shall never dwell quietly. Right. So if you got if you around a backbiter or a tail bearer or a slanderer, right, you need to get away from them immediately. Because they're going to they're going to have all kind of spirits looming over you that you don't want. Spirits of confusion, right? Spirits of disloyalty, of spirits of distrust, right? Spirits of wickedness, right? Whoso hearken unto it shall never find rest. So you you sitting there listening to all this information that your girlfriend giving you, right? Or that you or that your homie giving you, and and once they leave, you thinking you all normal. You you they gone. You got peace now. No. No, them words going to echo in your heart, in your mind all day, all night. It's going to be days and months go by. You still going to be harping in on what they said, right? Because that's how words do, man, 
right? They cut deep. They hit the innermost parts of the mind, right? And if you're sitting there listening to that, man, you ain't going to never find rest and you ain't going to never dwell quietly. Verse 17, the stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh. That's a physical thing. You hit somebody with the whip, it's going to make marks in the flesh physically. But the strokes of the tongue breaketh the bones, right? Because it, 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 it hits deep, right? The stroke of the tongue breaketh bones. It hits deep. Them words cut deep. Verse 18, many have fallen by the edge of the sword, but not so many as have fallen by the tongue. So a lot of people done been killed in society by the sword, by the modern day gun. In our time, a lot of people done been killed by the gun, but it has been many more people killed by the tongue, man. Your tongue is a power to be reckoned with, right? Everybody don't know how to control the power of the tongue, man. You got to know when to speak and when not to speak. You got to know what to talk about and what not to talk about around certain individuals, man. And that's a gift from the Lord. You have to pray for it and ask for it if you don't have it. But first, you got to recognize that you don't have the gift to control the power of the tongue and ask the most high to give it to you. You should be uh, including that in your prayers at night, man, or during the day or whenever you pray. Right. You should be including that in your tongue. Heavenly Father, give me the power to control to control my speech. Right. Like this, the day of atonement, man, like the elder was going into to last night, man, you probably offended somebody and you don't even know you offended them in your speech. You're not even thinking none of it. You're not even considering that you offended anybody. Right. But this person that's examining you, they heard what you said and they got offended, man. All right. So we got to rehearse the righteous acts of not being tail bearers and backbiters and slanderers. You shouldn't even want to you shouldn't even want to hang around those type of people, let alone those type of people shouldn't want to hang around you because you're going to shut it down every time. Right. Let me get one more precept. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon. In the Apocrypha, chapter 1, and let's get verse 11, right? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, and verse 11, and it reads, Therefore, beware of murmuring, which is unprofitable, right? That murmuring spirit, just like how they had in the wilderness, man, against Moses and Aaron, hey, that murmuring spirit, hey, that's, that's, a, that's a spirit that you got to watch out for too, man. That's that whisperers. You're talking shit behind somebody back. The most I got, got their hand on this person. And, and here you go mocking, slandering, tail bearing, backbiting, murmuring. Right? That's unprofitable. Right? Therefore, beware of murmuring, which is unprofitable, and refrain your tongue from backbiting. Refrain your tongue from backbiting. I know you want to go... Spread this information to, that this brother just told you. But hey, you got to refrain from that. Right? For there is no word so secret that shall go for nothing. That shall go for naught. And the mouth that Belieth slayeth the soul. Right? And Belieth goes into of an appearance. Right? Fail to give a true notion or impression of something. Disguise or contradict. So the mouth that contradict slayeth the soul. The mouth that is double tongued slayeth the soul. That's what Belieth mean. Having a double tongue. Right? That's why the most I say judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Because this person that's telling you the story of what just happened, they came to you, hey man, this just happened to me, man. So and so did this, that, and the third, and it went down like this, that, and the third. <laughs> okay, I heard your side. Now I gotta go hear the other side, other person's side of the story. Right? Man, why you don't believe what I'm telling you, man? That's that's exactly how it went down. Okay, I understand. But I gotta go hear the other person's side of the story as well. To make a righteous judgment on this situation. Right? Because you could be disguising or contradiction or contradicting um, 
the, the, the story. You could be manipulating the story in your favor. All right. And a lot of people do that. They manipulate stories or 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 um, confrontations or situations. They manipulate it in their favor to make them look good and make to make the other person look evil. Right. When when the actual truth of the matter is they the ones that's being wicked and the other person is the one that's being righteous. So you have to make righteous judgment. Right. You can't be that witness that that feeds into the bullshit and be in agreement with them. Right. And boosting their ego up. Right. You can't do that. The scriptures don't teach us to do that. Right. We have to be mindful of what we say. We have to be mindful of what we do. We have to be mindful of how we treat each other, man. Go not up and down as a talebearer amongst the people. Right? Love your neighbor as yourself. Right? And we must atone for that. We must repent for that if we have been doing these things. Right? And with that, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham. Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, Amanawa, Barakatha. It's HOI Las Vegas. It's HOI to the Cherish Fly. Shalom, Yasharala. Happy Day of Atonement.